Okay, let's talk about the NMTA Elementary Education Subtest 2 Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you're going to be an elementary teacher or you already are an elementary teacher in the great state of New Mexico. So welcome uh, to this video. So what I have here is a practice prom uh, that you definitely should be able to handle uh, for this particular assessment. So before we get into it, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tava Class Math, and I am also a middle and high school math teacher. So I know what it's like to take professional assessments. And uh, I could just say right off the bat, if you're new to, to, to teaching, if you're just coming out of college and it's the first time you know you're you're taking a professional uh, certification exam, you really do have to study for these exams, okay? And if you're concerned about the math portion of any one of these particular exams, then you know. Go ahead and you know put the time in to to really um, up your math skills. I will say this, um, at least from what I see uh, nationally, that the requirement to to know more math or to show you know that your aptitude at a higher level is kind of like um, that's the trend. Okay, so you're, de you're definitely going to need to know a good amount of math even at the elementary level. I think a lot of um, new teachers might say well at the elementary level I'm going to be teaching place value fractions and you know really basic kind of concepts but for your actual exam you're going to need to know a decent amount of high school level math um, algebra geometry etc so if you're concerned about um, you know the test and you're really you're looking for a great course I actually offer an NMTA elementary education math uh, prep course I'll leave the link in the description of this video if that's something you want to check out but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem here so I'm not going to explain the problem too much of course I'm going to solve it and then we're going to talk about it thoroughly but I want to give you an opportunity to uh, figure this out now without the aid of a calculator Okay, go ahead and tell me what 1 minus 2 minus 3 plus 1 half is equal to. Okay, so I know this is everyone's favorite topic, fractions. <laughs> and even as a math teacher, I don't particularly love working with fractions, but it's something you're going to have to be able to do. But there's a few other things going on in this particular problem. But again, I want to kind of just hold back and reserve any clues to give you a chance to go ahead and solve it. So maybe you want to go ahead and pause the video and give it a whirl. Okay, so hopefully everybody watching this video at least, you know, like uh, tried this problem. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, so you have your answer uh, ready. Well, I'm going to actually work out the problem and then we'll take a look at uh, your answer. We'll compare the two to mine and yours and we'll see how you did. All right, so what is going on here? Well, we got some numbers. Uh, we got some different operations. We have subtraction and addition, but really what we have is, I'm going to erase this here, we have 1 minus 2, so we have minus 2 here and a minus 3 here, and then we're adding a 1 half. So we have, you got to look carefully here, this is a positive number, but these guys right here are negative numbers, and then here we have another positive number, this is a fraction. Okay, so we're kind of dealing with a few things here. So we're going to be dealing with positive and negative numbers and also fractions. So let's go ahead and if you didn't see that right off the bat, now you're like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. And you want to any, at any time, you know, pause the video and go ahead and try to resolve this. I definitely encourage you to do that if you, you know, kind of needed a little bit of a, a hint. So let's go ahead and talk about something uh, that's really important to help us kind of see this problem a little bit better so if I had the problem 1 minus 2 okay most of you probably okay are thinking to yourself hmm 2 minus 1 alright now what, what am I getting at well 2 minus 1 I could write that as okay so it's a you know a, a real easy subtraction problem right 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 now Let's just write the answer there. It's equal to a positive 1. But what is 1 minus 2 equal to? 1 minus 2 is equal to negative 1. Okay, you got to be careful here. 1 minus 2 is equal to negative 1. And the way we'd like to do this in um, uh, middle school or high school level mathematics, when we're dealing with positive negative numbers, integers, we, I'd like to teach this, and this is probably a very common way of doing that, Instead of having 1 minus 2, I could write this as 1. We, what we're going to do is call it a plus negative. 
I'm going to take this subtraction sign, I'm going to, let's just do it this way, this 1 minus 2, I'm going to turn this subtraction sign into an addition sign, but then I'm going to put that negative two in front of the number to the right. So 1 minus 2 becomes 1 plus negative 2. So if I gave you this uh, question, 1 plus negative 2, hopefully most of you out there are like, oh, okay, this is a positive and negative number, 1 plus uh, negative 2, there's more negative, da da da, that's negative 1. Now, I can go into a lot of topics here on you know, uh, the rules for positive and negative numbers. Hopefully, you know, you're, you kind of remember them, but that's for other, that's like for another lesson, you know, another video. So um, if you're a little weak on that, then no big deal. Just, you know, know where you stand, you know, in terms of your current skill level. And, um, you know, you'll kind of know your uh, starting point. But anyways, let's go back to our problem. So now we're dealing with positive and negative numbers. Now let's write this problem a little bit differently. So what if I had one, Instead of negative or one minus two minus three, let's write it as one plus negative two plus negative three plus one half. Okay, so what's that equal to? Now I have a positive one. Anytime you see a number like just one or seven or eight, doesn't make a difference, and you don't see anything in front of it. If it, there's no negative sign in front of it, they're all positive. Okay, so I have a positive one, and I also have a positive one half. So I can kind of collect these guys up. And I also have a negative two and a negative three. So let's just kind of do this real quick. I have one, a positive one and a positive one half. So I have one and one half, okay, positive. Plus I have a negative two plus a negative three is a negative five, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. I don't want to make this video too long, but my teacher impulse in me is like, I want to kind of stop and make sure you understand uh, the rules of positive and negative numbers. If you go onto my uh, YouTube channel, I have hundreds of videos. I have many. Matter of fact, I think I have one of my first YouTube videos, just as a side thing here, I did well over 10 years ago, um, maybe even longer than that. I think it has a, close to a million views, at least at the time of this video, on the rules of positive and negative numbers. So check that out. You'll really you know, learn that stuff pretty quick. It's not hard, but uh, hopefully you understand, okay, positive one plus a positive one half is a positive one half plus negative two plus a negative three is a negative five. Okay, so now at this point, what we have to uh, do is figure out what one, uh, one and one half plus negative five is. Now, if this problem was simply one plus negative five, you would say, oh, the answer is negative four, okay? And you would be correct, but we got to deal with this fraction here. But just looking at that, one plus one, one and one half plus a negative five, what is the answer? What's the sign going to be? Is it going to be a positive or a negative number in terms of the um, our answer? What sign is it going to be? Well, just look at this. If I have one plus a negative five, the answer is negative four, okay? So I got to deal with that one half. And, some of you can probably just kind of, you know, use some mental math to figure out what the answer is going to be, but our answer is going to be negative. So now let's go ahead and uh, deal with the fractions here. So one and one half, let's go and write this as an improper fraction. So it's going to be two times one plus one. So two times one is two plus one is three halves. Okay. And I'm going to add this to a negative five. So we can write any number. I can write five at any number as a fraction, just put put it over one, okay? So this is gonna be negative five over one, okay? So now I have two fractions, and you can see here, I need to find the LCD. Okay, let's use a different color here. So I have a one here, I have a two here, so I need to multiply this guy over here by two. So I have a uh, lowest common denominator of two, so I have three halves plus negative 10, over 2. Okay, so that's where we're at now. So what do I do? Well, with fractions, once you have the same denominator, you keep that denominator. And now I have 3 plus, let's just do it the long way, show each step, 3 plus negative 10. I'm going to add the numerators. Once I have the same denominator, I can go ahead and add or subtract uh, the numerator. So 3 plus negative 10 is going to be negative 7 over two, and you don't need to uh, rewrite this fraction as a mixed number. I'm gonna go ahead and do it just to 
show you how. So our answer is negative 7 halves, but what's this equivalent to as a mixed number? Well, 7 halves, actually, let me kind of give us some, let me erase some of this stuff here. No, actually, I won't erase it because you might want to look and see how I did this. Let's just kind of put this in a box. Okay, so 7 halves, right? So 7 over 2. If I wanted to write this as a mixed number, okay, what's that equal to? Well, all we have to do is take 2 and divide it into 7, right? So 2 goes into 7 how many times? Uh, that's 3 times, right? 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract 1, so that's going to be 3 and 1 half. So 3 and 1 half. So the equivalent answer would be um, negative three and one half. But just a little tip here. Once you have your answer fully reduced, even as an improper fraction, don't take the extra steps to turn it into a mixed number unless you're told to do that. I've seen so many students through the years, uh, I, I'll tell you, it's just crazy how many times I've seen this, have the right answer as an improper fraction and then they go ahead and do all this work and they present their final answer as uh, a mixed number, and then they do this do, do, do this step incorrect, make a little error, uh, and then they get the problem wrong. Okay, so don't do that unless you're told to do this. Okay, so anyways, at first glance, you know, we take a look at this problem, and some of you out there are like, you know, maybe you were like, oh, this isn't, you know, too hard, but actually, there's a few things kind of going on. So math can be a little deceiving that way. We had some positive negative number action going on. We had some fraction stuff going on. So again, we weren't even doing algebra per se. We were just dealing with some kind of like middle school level type concepts. So uh, for sure, you you know, you would need to be able to handle this kind of uh, problem for this particular exam. Remember the NFTA elementary education, this subtest uh, two has a decent amount of algebra and geometry on it, high school level math, if you, if you will. So just because you're teaching elementary, um, doesn't mean that you know you're only going to be dealing with elementary math on this particular assessment. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So again, if you want to check out my NMTA Elementary Education Math, math Prep course, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. Um, if you like my teaching style, I already have hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos, and I'm creating new content all the time. So hopefully, you'll consider subscribing to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, how long have you been teaching? Um, are you new to teaching? Uh, you know. Um, you know, what's been your experience with this particular exam? Are you retaking it? By the way, if you are retaking an assessment, believe me when I tell you, so many teachers have to take certification exams more than once, sometimes more than one, two, three times, okay? It's not uncommon, even maybe four times. So if that's your situation, don't feel like you're alone, okay? If the math is that one thing that's holding you up, what you need is just a good game plan. But I'm here to tell you that you can, if you're at this level in your career, okay, if you got to this point where you're taking this certification exam, you can get through the math, okay? So don't let that stop you, but you do need to take it serious and you're really going to have to uh, kind of buckle down. And one other thing too is this, it, don't get overconfident. Let's say you were like, oh, I did great in uh, math and in uh, high school or in college. I took college algebra, I got A's and, or I took, uh, you know, pre-calculus or a calculus back in whatever, you know, four years ago, you still need to review, okay? For sure, you need to review. You want to have a lot of this math skills and topics fresh in your mind. So whatever you do, put the time in. So that way you can just take this assessment once and then move on uh, with your teaching career. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.